Einstein's formula of power is stop. Mass energy is energy is energy. Battles against battles against against gravity. Billions of years of struggle. Years of struggle. The main event. Main event. Mass energy. Mass energy. Kantara is a one-hour exploration of the cosmos and human life that includes over a hundred people on stage. So you have a choir of 80, 20 kids singing, two opera stars, and fuses music, art, science, and technology, and is free to the public. So we're going to give you a new way to experience virtual reality in a way that's never been done before. The Hubble Cantata will give you the opportunity to experience this piece in a communal environment without the use of headphones by creating a 360 degree immersive soundscape. We are starting to use 3D audio in the context of virtual reality and we're, we're making it a collective experience for a very large group of people. What we've done is design a system, a sound system that completely surrounds the audience and we can move sounds anywhere that we want within that three-dimensional space. So you will be fully immersed in the entire experience. And so not only will you experience the, the opera occurring on the stage, but when you put the VR headsets on, you'll suddenly be immersed fully in this world of sound related to the objects that you're seeing and experiencing in space. The Hubble telescope sees stars being born. It sees stars die. It sees galaxies that are trillions of miles away. And for the first time ever, we are going to give you the opportunity to float in virtual reality through the photorealistic simulations of the iconic images from the Hubble telescope that have deepened our understanding of the universe. Virtual reality allows you not just to look at what Hubble sees, it almost brings you out there to be immersed in what Hubble sees. And that is something that truly only virtual reality can do. I mean, you feel now that you are in this cosmos, in this universe of Hubble. This Full Stars is the five-minute virtual reality experience that accompanies the Hubble Cantata as you are transported alongside the Hubble telescope on a journey through the cosmos and into the Orion Nebula. We discover the parallels between human life on Earth and stars in the heavens. Stars are within us. The atoms that form our bodies were actually also forged inside stars. So what we're, we're trying to do on the visual effects side of things is, is really make things as acutely accurate, uh, yet trying to create a sense of magical realism as well with what we're creating. Um, so we've been speaking with Hubble astrophysicists and gathering their information about what these nebulas actually look like and, and trying to, to combine that knowledge with our knowledge as artists to create the best possible imagery. This experience will allow us to go to the Orion Nebula, a place that no human's ever been before. This has been an exciting year in virtual reality. The Oculus headsets have shipped, the HTC Vive headsets are out. That's very expensive hardware. We're giving you the tools to experience virtual reality in this incredibly exciting way for free. The August 6th performance of the Hubble Cantata is only the beginning. We'll be touring the piece internationally, from concert halls, museums, film festivals, and we'll even be distributing the film online so that you can enjoy the Hubble Cantata from the comfort of your own home. By supporting this project, you're helping us make it happen. We want to bring this project to you, and uh, with your help, we can make this possible. We need your support uh, because we need to bring this experience to life, um, and we want to bring it to as many people as possible. So join us on this journey to the cosmos. Very exciting. The filmmaker we just met in that video is here with us in person right now. No virtual reality needed. And unusually for a movie director, it was science that f first put her behind the camera to tell us how that happened and about her involvement with the Hubble Cantata. We want to welcome Eliza McNitt. Eliza, thank you very much for being on BK Live. Thank you for having me. I'm blown away just by that four minutes. Oh, I'm all you. in. How do I click on? I want to support. <laughs> how did you originally conceive of this Cantata project? 
So this project is, uh, it was created by a composer who's this brilliant composer who went to Juilliard, whose name is Paola oh, Prestini. Yeah. And uh, so Paola created the Hubble Cantata along with Mario Livio, who is an astrophysicist, and he's our advisor on this project. And together they crafted this beautiful piece about this exploration through the cosmos and the story about a man and a wife. And the libretto was written by Royce Vivrec. And so uh, they had this amazing, beautiful musical piece mm -hmm. about the Hubble telescope. And so they approached me to create the visuals for the experience. And so when they came to me and said, we want to make people feel like they're in space, I yeah. thought, you know, what else is better than virtual reality to really make you feel like you're flying through the cosmos? Wow. So where I would have just walked into a toy store and bought those glow-in-the-dark stickers you just press up on the ceiling, how did you think, let's get the Hubble as the inspiration and put people in a rocket pack to outer space? <laughs> I wanted to make people feel like they're floating in space because space is so uniquely suited for VR mm -hmm. because it's a place mm -hmm. where not so many people can go yeah. unless you're an astronaut. Uh, you don't get to go to space and it's, or you go to Mars perhaps. Yeah. But uh, it's, some, it's an experience that I wanted to create for anyone to be able to step into and to be transported into the cosmos alongside the Hubble and to be able to see what Hubble sees because this experience will take you thousands of light years away yeah. into the Orion Nebula, which is the birthplace of stars. And, yeah. It's not like we've exactly been there, but you're not just making it up and saying, oh, this is what it should look like. You're no. actually doing a lot of work and research. Yes, yeah, so we've worked with uh, Dr. Mario Livio, who's our advisor, as well as Dr. Philip Plate, who's also known as the Bad Astronomer, mm -hmm. and uh, they've advised us on the project and how, you know, what would it look like if if you were a star? What would it look like if you were inside of the Orion Nebula? What would it look like if you were suspended in space above the Earth looking down at the sunrise? And these are the kinds of questions that I would ask them and try to figure out what would, you know, scientifically and based on data, what would this actually feel like if I went there and if you went there? And you have a science background. Yes. You won awards on your research on honeybee colony collapse disorder. <laughs> how do you? How can you summarize space. honeybee colony <laughs> collapse disorder in a second or two? And also, I mean, more generally, sure. how did you arrive at filmmaking through your science background? Sure. Uh, so I started researching the disappearance of honeybees around the world, mm -hmm. which is a global epidemic. Uh, it's a very serious problem. And uh, I was tracing a pesticide, which is a replacement for DDT called imidacloprid through the pollination pathways of honeybees. And that is what led me to filmmaking. Because naturally, <laughs> naturally <laughs> I, was, I went to the Intel Science Fair and I was a winner there. And I came home and I told everyone, you know, about this problem, about the disappearance of bees. And no one even knew what CCD, colony collapse disorder, stood for. And so it made me realize that there needs to be something to be able to create a, you know, a, a project about this to be yeah. able to get this out. And so I made a documentary film about You're it. You're using both sides of your brain. <laughs> you must be a very evolved person. I'm very bad at math. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's one consolation. <laughs> bad at math. How do you see this experience, uh, the cantata experience, mm -hmm. for the viewers playing out in the park? Sure. So um, in the week beforehand, we're going to release an app. And so you'll get the opportunity to download the app, which will give you the access to the virtual reality film. So I can bring my own phone. I don't have yep. to wait for some no, nasty no. thing so, that someone <laughs> used before. You have to use your own cell phone. Gotcha. And that's what's really exciting about this, is the technology is at a point where we can give the tools for you to be able to have this experience. Mm -hmm. So you come with your own cell phone, and then we're going to give you a cardboard headset so that you can access the virtual reality experience through these VR goggles. And then during the uh, cantata, mm. the conductor is going to turn to the audience and prompt everyone to put on their headsets yeah. as if they're a part of this, you know, as if they're a part of the orchestra. And then um, there's going to be a 3D, 360 degree sound design that will bring you even deeper into the cosmos. <laughs> I feel like we're living in the future, Greg. Absolutely. Future. We are. I will be there. I'm so excited for this. I love virtual reality. Do you have, I mean, what are your own experiences? in virtual reality outside of making the cantata? Sure, so um, 
Have I was you really any concerts or anything like that. I in mean, VR, yeah. well, yeah. So I've watched I've watched a lot of VR, um, and I've you know I've had both a lot of really bad VR experiences <laughs> and a lot of really great ones, yeah. and ones that I found really interesting and inspiring, and wanted uh, that have inspired me to dive deeper into the medium, mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, right now I've been watching, um, I don't know if you've seen Notes on Blindness, but it's one of the most beautiful experiences that I've ever seen. Really? Yeah, and so that one uh, is, it really takes the medium and pushes it farther than what you would expect from VR. So I think that's what's really exciting about virtual reality right now is that there are no, there are no rules. And so you, you know, it's the Wild West right now in VR, and people are really taking this and experimenting with it, yeah. and using technology to create really powerful and beautiful art. So I just went to see Ghostbusters in 3D, which was <laughs> kind of a total waste because there was only like one slime thing coming at me, <laughs> and there was so much promise when we saw Avatar and like 3D is yeah. going to revolution. And I don't think that that promise has been largely fulfilled. How do you think VR can avoid that sort of pitfall? Is it's just an extra four bucks, but it's not really like changing your experience. Virtual reality is an entirely different medium from film. So when people are like, is it going to replace film? No. Yeah. <laughs> it's something completely different. And there's going to be so many ways to use this medium. And there's so many levels of uh, VR experiences. And um, with some, with our film, it's something that you know, you'll be surrounded in this universe. But there are some experiences where you can paint on the HTC Vive. And those yeah. are really, you know, really interactive experiences. So the uh, virtual reality just keeps on pushing the medium further and further until we get to AR, which is going to be what's really exciting. AR, which, OK. <laughs> no, I'm one of the same. What's thing. AR? AR is augmented reality. So that's going to be like the HoloLens, where you are, you know, I'm sitting here with you guys, and we can put on glasses and project uh, the cast of your favorite TV show in the room with us. <laughs> BK Live. You can get it right <laughs> in your oh, living yeah, room. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right, we're all excited for the Cantata, looking ahead to August 6th. Uh, again, what can you expect viewers will take away, or audience members will take away from their experience, not just in the park, but in future Cantata? performances sure so it's a um, this is an art piece mm -hmm. and it's this journey into the cosmos like you've never seen before and uh, it's a very powerful musical piece so at our uh, celebrate Brooklyn performance there's going to be a hundred people on stage uh, there's two stars from the Met Opera and a 30-person orchestra mm -hmm. so you're gonna have a very powerful experience musically mm -hmm. and then with the VR film you'll have this opportunity to see the universe in a way that you haven't been able to see it before. And what we're doing with these Hubble photos is, yeah. you know, we see photographs and they're just two dimensional, right. but we're they're bringing you into that and we're bringing you this yeah. new perspective that you haven't had before this. So give us the rundown then. We know that it's <laughs> August 6th, but yep. when can we download this thing and get ready to come and have an experience out at Brick Celebrate Brooklyn? Sure. I think um, so the app goes live, I believe, the week beforehand. Okay. And you can download that on the National Sawdust website. Website. And uh, once you download the film, you'll have the content there, and you'll be—you just show up. It's a totally free performance, yeah. so anyone can go. And uh, also, if you don't have a smartphone, mm -hmm. you are going to still be able to experience the VR film because it will be projected in 2D on a scrim for everyone to watch. Awesome. So it'll be just like, it'll also be projected or as a regular just film. just run out of data and you yeah. can't download the whole thing, <laughs> exactly. you can watch some of it on the screen as well. <laughs> That's phenomenal. August 6th will be August 6th, yes. Thank you, Eliza. It's so exciting. Uh, it, Looking forward to checking out the cantata online at Kickstarter, too. And, yes. of course, thank you for being a part of Brick Celebrate Brooklyn, August 6th. Really looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you, Eliza. You Thanks for being on the show. I can talk about your other film work in the real world. Thank you, you know, yeah. A lot of great short films, including one with the Brooklyn Girl that uh, we've had on the show with Ada Perry. Ada Perry, yes. Yeah. We did a film for TED, uh, awesome. for the TED Talks. Yeah. And she was actually an astronaut being uh, blast off into space. I'm noticing a theme here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Science and filmmaking. Excellent. Looking forward to August 6th. Thank you.